All right, today I'm gonna to talk about how to take German volume training to the next level. All right, so in the previous video, I talked about the classic 10 sets of 10 method of German volume training. Today, we're gonna to talk about what's referred to as advanced German volume training. So it's kind of taking German volume training to the next level for the advanced trainee and those who are looking more so for a very quick, massive strength increase. So again, the German volume training, it was all popularized and brought to the Western world by one man, Charles Poliquin, back in the 80s. He massively popularized it. He made it big. The biggest reason why so many gym goers today are doing it is because of the results that he proved that the systems of German volume training can get, both the classic 10 by 10 in the previous video and also with the athletic population this advanced German volume training. So as I said, this is not a method that is used for the newbie trainee. This is something that will completely destroy, just absolutely demolish them. This is something for the advanced trainee looking to actually take their training to another level and get an insane, massive new stimulus to their system. Now it's not complicated, just like the regular German volume training. It's a very simple method behind the madness of it. With advanced German volume training, however, you're still doing the two supersets in a workout. The schedule is still the same, still a five day rotation. Day one, chest and back. Day two, legs. Day three is off. Day four, arms and shoulders. Day five is off again. And then you start back over. Day six, back on chest and back. So take the whole seven day, Monday to Sunday schedule out of your head. When you're doing German volume training, you're gonna do six rotations of this routine as well over the course of a month of 30 days. So the intensity that you're going to be looking at with advanced German volume training is around 75% of your one rep max. So if you're able to do 300 pounds on the squat or a deadlift, you're looking at only doing 225 pounds in the first week for this. For this. You're looking at sets of three to five repetitions. So it's a lot less reps, which is why you're able to handle higher loads. Now, the main purpose behind advanced German volume training is to increase strength and hypertrophy. So populations that this is excellent for are those in weight class sports. So your mixed martial artists, judo, all the different martial arts sports, as well as other weight class sports like rowing. The reason why AGVT is great for weight class sport athletes is the fact that because you're using a higher threshold, a higher in overall intensity, you're gonna be getting a strength increase, but at the same time, you're also gonna be bringing up the person's muscle mass. So when these two are coming up at the same time, it's what's referred to as functional hypertrophy. So kind of hypertrophy or new muscle mass that you can use in a strength domain. So as I said before, this is a very simple workout routine in theory you're gonna be primarily focusing strictly on the big movers. So your squats, deadlifts, presses, chins, again, are your big movers here. You're not trying to think about doing leg extensions or leg presses. This is where you're taking the hardest exercises in the world to do, and you're gonna be pushing the limit on them, both weight and rep-wise, in the intensity range that we're gonna be working with. The B series, on the other hand, it's gonna still be prime movers, but you're gonna be working in a different direction. So if on the A series you're doing an incline press, the B series you're gonna be doing a decline movement, like a dip. So at the end of the video, I'm gonna actually have another sample routine going through each of the day. Now keep in mind, if you're a new trainee, don't jump into doing this. This is a disclaimer here. Wait until you've built up a year or two of training experience, then give this a go. If you're a already advanced trainee, you've been working out for a couple of years hard, diligently, give it a go. And let me know in the comments section later on how the workouts go. Again, touching on what to choose for your exercises. This A series, you're gonna be working in the three to five rep range, and you're gonna be taking 90 to 120 second rest between exercises. You're gonna do this for all 10 sets. Then when you get onto the B series, you're gonna be working between five and eight reps. But if you're writing the workout yourself, pick a three rep range to focus on. So either five to seven or six to eight that you're gonna be using for the entire workout routine across all six rotations of it. Don't think that one week you're gonna do five to seven, the next week six to eight. It makes it harder to gauge your progress in that regard. Okay, so if you wanna take this to another level, you wanna take it up a notch, 
One way of doing it is that you go with workout one, you're gonna be doing 10 sets of five. Workout two, you're gonna do 10 sets of four. Workout three, you're gonna do 10 sets of three. Workout four, five, six, you're gonna repeat the same method. So workout four, five reps. Workout five, you're gonna do four reps. Workout six, you're gonna do three reps. But on workout four, you're gonna do the weight you did on workout two. On workout five, you're gonna do the weight that you did on workout three. And then on workout six, you're gonna to try to take the weight that you did on workout five, but you're gonna to try to add another four to five percent. You're gonna push this for 10 sets of three. This is a way that you're gonna be maximally recruiting your highest threshold motor units in the latter sets. So when you get to closer to sets seven, eight, nine, ten, the first few sets, it might not seem like the hardest weight in the world to do, but it's that cumulative fatigue that's gonna to start to kick in as you get to the later sets. And at that point, that's when you're gonna be getting the maximal desired outcome and benefit from this workout style. Don't think that, oh, I gotta add weight between sets. No, 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 pick one weight, you start there, and you keep that weight for the entire workout. The next workout, you add some. The workout after that, you add some. And then you come back on workout four to the second workout's weight, and you start there. So don't think in the middle of the workout, oh, this is feeling easy, add weight. No, trust the process. Don't try to burn yourself out in the first four or five sets. You want it so that on set seven, eight, nine, ten, that's when you're feeling that fall off point, not before then. All right, so on the screen right now, you're gonna see the sample workout for chest and back. So A1, you're gonna be doing an incline bench press with a barbell with a 30 degree incline. You're gonna be doing this for 10 sets of three to five. The A2, chin ups. So lean away on the gymnastics rings. Again, 10 sets of three to five. You keep the same rep range for both exercises. As you see, the tempo for both is four zero x zero. So this is four seconds down, no pause at the bottom, explode up as fast as you possibly can, no pause at the top, right into the next rep. The B series, as I said in the explanation before, you take the same muscle groups and you're gonna be going in a different direction with still a big prime moving exercise. So B1. Parallel bar dips. There's a little caveat to this one. You're doing an qu extra quarter rep at the bottom. So you go all the way down. You come up one quarter of the way back up. Go back down, then come up all the way. B2, dumbbell rows. So these are going to be single arm here. Really focus on going heavy with the weight here. Keeping everything form-wise perfect. Don't start to slack on form just because it's heavy. If you're having to compromise your form, drop the weight a little bit. Get the most desired outcome from the workout. And for these, I've given five, three sets of five to seven reps. So as you can see there, there's that three rep window. The legs workout for a GVT. First exercise, a one heels wedged front squats. Again, 10 sets of three to five, four seconds down, zero pause, explode up, no pause at the top, right into that next rep. Take 120 seconds or two minute rest. Then you get into the glute ham raise. Same rep ranges, 10 sets of three to five here as well. The B series, we're getting into drop lunges. So these are, most people aren't familiar with the drop lunge. So all it is is you stand on an aerobic step, you step down into a lunge, and then you step back up onto the aerobic step. So you're kind of stepping forward, down off of it, and then you're coming up, having to go deeper into a lunge and then coming back up higher. It's a little bit harder. It's gonna be uh, a little more taxing. B2 with prone leg curl, because the hamstrings are a fascia twitch muscle group, I chose three sets of five to seven here. You keep your toes turned out and you point on the way down, you point your toes away from you. And then when you're coming, when you're actually doing the lift, pull your toes up, it's gonna give you a little assistance from your calves and then you complete the rep. Workout three, the shoulders and arms workout. So here, things get a little, little more interesting with arms and shoulders. So. If a1, we're doing fat grip, easy curl bar, reverse preacher curls. So with this, if you don't have a thick bar in your gym, just get some fat grips and you can add these to any barbell, any easy curl bar in any, basically any gym, and then you've got yourself a fat bar. So here again, four seconds down, no pause, explode up. A2, behind the neck press, so you're doing these seated with a nice wide grip. Again, 10 sets, three to five. 
He knows that everything stays consistent throughout. This way we can gauge our progress better. And it's also so that we keep the same kind of loading scheme every workout. B1, now we get into just some more quote unquote meathead stuff with the incline dumbbell curls. If you don't have fat uh, dumbbells, again, use the fat grips and you're able to do this. If you don't have fat grips, you can also just wrap a towel around the dumbbells and it increases the diameter so it's a little bit bigger to hold on to. Increases the forearm recruitment as well when you do this. B2, skull crushers. So you're gonna get the easy curl bar, you're gonna lay on a flat bench. And if you're able to add some chains to this, it's gonna use the uh, your strength curve a little bit more. And you're gonna really tax the triceps as you're getting closer to the lockout point. So when your triceps are at their strongest, you're gonna be lifting the most weight. All right, so from this video, I'm hoping that you understand a little bit more of the difference between the classic 10 sets of 10 German volume training and then the advanced German volume training and how you can use both to your advantage. If you're just looking strictly for mass, 10 by 10 classic German volume training. If you want to add the strength component into it a little bit more, use the advanced German volume training. Give it a try. Let me know in the comments later on how it goes. All right, thank you for watching right to the end of this video. If you'd like to see more content by me, click the subscribe button here. And for another YouTube suggested video by me, click here. And if you liked what you saw today, don't forget, click the little like button below. Until next time, Coach Tony, Wrestling Podium Performance.